So there we go. We got an importing country, and we can see how much is domestically produced and how much is imported. Now, when we have the quota, in order for it to be a binding quota, and just to kind of give you some numbers here, let's suppose that this is 20,000 units, 20,000 tons of copper. And quantity demanded out here is 80,000. So the domestic consumption is 80,000 tons. Domestic production is 20,000 tons. What's the gap in between? That 60,000 tons is what's being imported. Now, we talked a little bit about the politics of protectionism. Some of these copper producers, they go and lobby their legislators. They try to get the government to stop these imports. One of the ways we said was a tariff. The other way is an import quota. Big mistake that people make is they say, we put in a quota, it won't affect the price. If it affects the price, it only affects the price of the imported goods. Not true. It affects the price throughout the whole market. Now, to really get an understanding of how that price comes about, we got to be able to draw the effective supply curve. That's the kinky supply curve. Because what's happening here is initially we've got some domestic producers who can compete against the world. This section of the domestic supply curve, those guys can compete. They can produce at costs lower than PW. But once we get up to PW, the other domestic producers, they're not efficient. They can't compete at the world price. And so we shut down our domestic production at this point. And then we start to import. And so that would normally give us this as our effective supply. Now, with an import quota, though, remember, we were importing 60,000. If we're going to have a binding import quota, the government comes in and says, we're going to limit that to 40,000 tons. Can't do 60 anymore. So what's going to happen is, once we hit here, we're going to go out 40,000 tons. So we get out about right here. And we can't go the rest of the way there. So I'm going to make that so it's not bold anymore. We can't go the rest of the way. Now, between our domestic production and the imports, which are limited to 40,000, we're not able to satisfy the demand. We really do have a shortage here. So who comes back into play? Can't import anymore. So those domestic producers that were previously not in the market, they're able to come back in. Effectively, what we've done is taken this domestic supply curve and we broke it right here. Right here where we made this first kink. We broke it. We're going to take the top part of that and make it parallel here. That's the su domestic supply plus the quota. So that's the kinky supply. We've got going up the domestic supply. Then we've got the import quota going along the world price. That's one of the things that they make a mistake on in, in, when we have the big quiz. It's that domestic price, or I'm sorry, world price. That's where we go along and then back to the domestic supply. Now we find where the, the effective supply curve intersects with that demand curve. And that's right here. That's a higher price. This is P, and I'll put P quota. QD1, domestic consumption has gone down. But then, now here's the tricky part in terms of figuring out the domestic production. Because we've got domestic production, imports, then a little bit more domestic production. And that gets a little tricky to try to figure out. But if we use a little geometry there, our geometry will help us recognize that there's a parallelogram here. And in fact, this distance here of this triangle is the same as if we had made a triangle right here. Those two triangles. Those are congruent triangles. What we're going to do is drop a line here because this is QS, the original domestic production, and there's the extra domestic production. So we're going to mark our QS over here. So effectively, we're using the old domestic supply to kind of see what's happening with all the domestic supply. It puts all domestic supply together, and then we got the import separate. So domestic production went up, and QD1 to QS1, our imports have gone down. So that's a quota. That's the big key thing. 
Now, we got to look at the welfare analysis on this thing. Let's look at what happened to consumer surplus. Under autarky, it was just A. With world trade, they got B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. Everything under demand and above the world price now that they're buying at the world price. Now, the producers, on the other hand, though, they just had H under world trade. Now, what is it that they had under autarky? Under autarky, the price PA prevailed, so it's BEH that the producers had. That's why they weren't happy about these imports. The imports caused them to lose B and E of their producer surplus. So when they fight for this quota, they get some more producer surplus. And what we're going to use is that original domestic supply because we take, take advantage of the geometry there. So what's going to happen here is that we go from just having H for the domestic producers and they're able to capture E again. Everything under the price, P quota, and above the domestic supply. That's the domestic firms, their producer surplus. Now, what do the consumers get, though? Consumers, since the price is now P quota, they get A, B, C, D. And that's it. Who gets F, G, H, I, J? Good question. You guys saw with the tariff that we had a rectangle there that was a tariff revenue. And what we have here is that same rectangle, if you can see it, kind of like the little magic eye books, right? This rectangle right here that is G, H, and I. That rectangle, if you remember when we did quotas just with regular supply and demand, that's economic rent. And the economic rent goes to whoever controls the licenses. Remember, that was an important issue is how, what, how, what's the system of allocating those licenses? Is it first come, first serve? Is it that they sell the licenses? If there's a customs official in charge of allowing who gets in, do they take advantage and does that get tra transferred in the form of bribes? So that's economic rent. It could go to the government if they auction off those licenses. But this depends on how licenses for importing so that we can maintain the import quota, how they're allocated. And what are we left with? Just like with the tariff, we got the bookends. Those bookends there, F and J, those triangles, the bookends erect that, around that rectangle, that's the deadweight loss. The deadweight loss, the symbol of inefficiency. So with this quota, the sum of consumer surplus and producer surplus is reduced the sum of consumer surplus and producer surplus when there's free trade. Okay, so again, the, the big key here, I think after this, once you get this domestic supply curve with the quota, the kinky supply curve, we'll give credit to Caroline Healy, okay, Caroline, remember that song? That's Caroline's song, Outcast, great band. So there it is, that's the, uh, get that kinky supply curve in, after that, it's pretty easy, all right? Good luck with that, good luck on a big quiz on uh, day three.